It is five minutes past noon. You're tuned to KFUG LP Crescent City. The show is Community Service. I'm Jess Paul. And in the studio with me now is Gordon Clay. And right before we went on, like 10 seconds before I turned on the microphone, I asked Gordon, what do I refer to you as? And he just said, an activist. (laughs) What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? An activist for and about what? Well, my main two issues uh, since I moved to Oregon from California are bullying Mm -hmm. and suicide. Mm-hmm. And we're in a, a, you're in a county and I'm in a county in Curry that have very high suicide rates. And California, while well, California only has a su- suicide rate ranking that the uh, 40, something like the 43rd in the nation, mm-hmm. Oregon is 10th in the nation. Whoa. But when you look at uh, Del Norte County, it's two and a half times the suicide rate of the rest of California. Two and a half times the suicide rate. Now, are we talking just overall like pan-demographic suicide rates, or are we talking specifically youth suicide? That That's uh, overall, mm-hmm. as it relates to California, uh, the third leading cause of death for 10 to 24-year-olds mm-hmm. is suicide. Mm-hmm. In Oregon, this, and these are tricky, the second leading cause of death for 10 to 34-year-olds they don't use the same data, they but they're the coming same. from the same people. <laughs> uh, and they don't a, use the it's same a second leading cause wow. of death. Now, I remember when you when you spoke with the uh, the city council about, what, two months ago, maybe two and a half months ago, uh, that uh, um, and we were talking about the same things we'll be talking about, at least uh, in relation to the suicide prevention, uh, um, that I was really surprised to see suicide ranked that high on the list of, of causes of death. I thought, you know, hey, you got your heart disease, you got your cancer, you got your accidents, you have things like that. I did not realize suicide was such a, <laughs> such a problem, I guess. Well, in the ranking of all ages, it usually ranks around 10, 8 to 10, mm-hmm. depending with, with all of those other uh, cancers, et cetera, ahead of it. Yeah. But we're talking about a younger age group, yeah. which doesn't get Alzheimer's. And exactly. hasn't hit by cancer except for some prostate and some... Uh, or not prostate, but testicular cancer mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. breast cancer. Mm-hmm. You've, you've got a different scenario. Good and point. so where those deaths end up are unintentional uh, accidents mm-hmm. and, you know, car accidents and that kind of thing, and then uh, suicide. Mm-hmm. And the other thing about that is that 80% of suicide attempts overall are women. Eighty percent of successful suicides overall are men. Wow! And that means about four to five times more suicides for men than women. Mm-hmm. But when you take it down to the younger age groups, men or or boys are seven times to one for girls. Wow! And so there's a lot of pressure. This is the first generation that has has the lead into their professional career is not being able to make as much as their parents. Mm -hmm. That's never happened before. It's happening now. Mm -hmm. And it's just a crisis. And then we're in more rural communities here where the services are are lacking, uh, economic jobs are lacking, Mm -hmm. that you can usually find in a place like Portland or, or Eugene or even Eureka, you're right. Those things uh, are. Try doing it with your nose. I've done that a couple of times. <laughs> so it it's tough. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's fa- it's sad. And then within the nation's people, mm-hmm. it's even more depressing because of their limited additional limits mm-hmm. on their ability to get an education and those kind of things and and uh, a progress in the job world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and there's been a real effort, uh, especially with the Yurok in, in Klamath, to sort of point out the fact that, look, suicide's a problem on the res, and there's, yep. a, lot of, there's a lot of issues behind it, but something needs to be said about this, and right. it's good to see that happen. How did you get involved with uh, suicide prevention as a cause, suicide awareness? When I first moved, I retired in 2001 mm-hmm. from 35 years in the advertising business. Oh, and wow. I've run workshops and anger and all that kind of stuff for over 25 years. Mm-hmm. And I moved up to Oregon, and I joined the Curry County Commission on Children and Family and the Drug Coalition mm-hmm. that was part of the government. Every county had those systems. And so I developed a 
a essay contest for seniors in at Brookings High School, and there's around a hundred of them, mm-hmm. to write an essay on how ne- ag- alcohol has negatively impacted your life. Mm-hmm. And that went on for seven years. And actually, the pilot up there printed during April. There's either eight or nine editions of the pilot. Mm-hmm. And so in each edition, they printed a one of the essays. Oh, wow. And that really was good. Well, a few years, well, that stopped. Uh, it was defunded in, I think, like 2008 or nine, something like that. Mm-hmm. And a young lady... Um, who was a thespian up in Brookings and a really, really neat kid. I knew her. Uh, she was, uh, she came out as a bisexual in her junior year, got harassed a lot. The school ignored it. They paid no attention. They said, oh, it's not happening. And uh, in 2012 or 13, she committed suicide. Oh, wow. And that really was hurtful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Actually, a little bit of a backstory. I went through a divorce 41 years ago, and I was very suicidal. Mm-hmm. And I had a guy that would talk me down, and he said, call me anytime, 24 hours a day. Don't do anything until we talk again. Wow. And so I had honored that, and and he saved my life in in 74. Mm-hmm. In 82, I got a, a Christmas card from his wife saying he committed suicide oh. by his own hand. Wow. So that really triggered a piece for me around suicide generally, mm-hmm. and I've been close to it. And then when she took her life, um, rather unexpectedly, uh, it was just, that was too much. Mm-hmm. And so I took on both the suicide program and I'd been working in bullying because mm-hmm. we've got Curry County, according to the Healthy Teen Survey in 2014-15 leads the state in uh, harassment of the kids. Over 50% of the kids get harassed in the 30 days before the survey. And the closest school is 40%. And then when it gets down to suicidality and uh, actually attempting suicide, we lead the state in both of those and in suicide attempts or twice the Oregon average. Wow. So it's this whole system that I'm hoping it's not ignored, but I don't see a lot of mm-hmm. positive action towards it. I have, I'm have. i not aware of these numbers. Yeah. And I, I'm surprised I'm not aware of these numbers, actually. Well, these these are Oregon numbers. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and you were saying it's it's more difficult to get uh, uh, to get this. Well, I just California. haven't found it. The, okay. The data, similar data that I have found in in California, the last survey I think was done in 2011, 2012. Mm-hmm. That's rather dated data. <laughs> and so um, I hadn't gotten anything earlier than in that, and that was a combination of something like 2008 to 2011. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't give you a good trend. It's sort of an average yeah. thing. Uh, and if I found that information, I'd do it for Del Norte County, too, because I, I, I've i talked to a lot of people here. Mm-hmm. Actually, with the suicide buttons that you've got here, the, yes. the semicolon buttons and cards, there's some more than 30 locations in Crescent City mm-hmm. that have these on their counters. Mm-hmm. I see them all over the place, yeah. yeah. And people and, are wearing them, kids especially wearing them. Kids. Yeah. And one of the, I, were you there at the uh, city council? It was a city council meeting mm-hmm. that uh, the chairman, when I got through with accepting the proclamation, mm-hmm. said, Gordon, what's this semicolon mean? Mm-hmm. Were mm-hmm. you there? Yeah, I was. That and, was, yeah. And what, he's, what I remember him saying is, I didn't want to invade my son's space, mm-hmm. but he has worn that on his backpack for a whole year yeah yeah you know and that and that came from you yeah because you were the only you and tsunami games were the only places last year that were, were we showing it? the buttons really seriously yeah seriously <laughs> but i hadn't gone out i okay, hadn't okay. gone pushing it. <laughs> right. you know i did it because of jacob peterson patterson, patterson yes yeah and yeah. he i was on gender talk mm-hmm. and he said hey Let's put the buttons out here. Yeah, that's wonderful. And so we did it. And uh, then this year, I really made an effort to get all of Curry County involved, including Port Orford, 
and all of Crescent City. And I've got over 120 locations now. Wow. Including the gun shops mm -hmm. and the, the liquor stores and in and, and Oregon, the dispensaries. Uh -huh. And all of the, almost all of the health professional, mental health professional people. Wow. And did I say auto parts stores? Nope. Auto parts stores. <laughs> auto parts. Yeah. Really? That's so it's where... <laughs> Where guys are. Okay, so I just want to I want to I want to say this because we have to do this. Yeah, go for it. Verbally instead of visually, right? Okay. It's a, it's a white button and it's got just a black semicolon, and I don't know what font that is, yeah. but, <laughs> but it's just the semicolon. Explain the uh, the, the the meaning of the semicolon. If okay, you this is a, a situation that came from a young lady in the Midwest three years ago, and her father died, uh, committed suicide, and that as she saw it put a period at the end of his life. Mm -hmm. So in, she said, I want to do something to change this, and I'm still alive, and I'm going to make, have a suicide or a semicolon campaign. Mm -hmm. I took that, and, and I've seen hundreds of tattoos. You Google images on semicolon, mm -hmm. and you'll see literally hundreds of tattoos set up by men, by warriors, by women, by depressed, mm -hmm. by youth, uh, of utilizing the semicolon. And so I decided to make a card available that everybody can carry. And if you have a friend, particularly for men, that's going through a divorce or seems depressed or lost a job or something like that, just get, ask, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Or you can even ask, are you feeling suicidal? Mm -hmm. Because what we know is that does not push somebody into suicide. That doesn't? Asking it does that not. Doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that's the big stigma out there that everybody's afraid to you do don't, that. Don't say the word. But don't give them the idea. But what happens is that it actually says somebody cares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Just somebody's willing to listen. And so mm -hmm. what we ask and why so many kids are wearing it, and I was at the, health, the teen health fair in June at mm -hmm. the high school and gave out hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that they want to be able to have friends that are going through trouble mm -hmm. to talk. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, I wear the button, I'm willing to listen. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. That's beautiful. And uh, let me add one more please, thing. Please, please, add whatever you like. Particularly See, I... for the kids. Only 5% of teens will call a suicide hotline. Mm -hmm. They do not talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. But they do text. They don't even talk on their cell phones. Yeah. And so there's a number. The National Suicide Hotline phone line is estimated to get 1.2 million calls this year. Wow. This number, 741741, mm -hmm. which is a text number, not a phone call, but a text, gets that many a month. Wow. And so it really takes, I, I won't say that the hotlines are discriminating mm -hmm. against youth. But they don't have an avenue for youth in the way they work. Sure. And this gives them that avenue. And the way when somebody calls the phone line, all that the counselor has is in that person's head. Mm -hmm. When they text, that text goes into a computer that has 20 million, pre actually 23 million now, previous texts in it. It analyzes it, and by the time it gets to the counselor that's available mm -hmm. at that time. It's already an analyzed it, and it says on the counselor screen, like 83% of people who say this mm -hmm. are extremely suicidal, mm -hmm. or they're cutters or something like that. That's amazing. And then it says the next best question to ask. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it really gets, it doesn't use an individual's brain. Uh, no, no. And it's, it's... the individual counselor is trained and is always there to interrupt but it adds that extra element mm -hmm. of research in the minute. Yeah, right you know, up and to date. That's one. And helps take the kids from from hot to cool, as they say, mm -hmm. or it gets it says definitely you got to go nine one one on this mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. and it makes it gets the safety in there at a much quicker rate. Wow, that's impressive. Just as a piece of technology, you yeah, know, just it as is. Like, wow, that's and and where our culture is going, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's shifting. Yeah, and nine one one, I'm told, is working on this, but it's a really complicated system. <laughs> yeah, and the entrepreneur came up with it. There's a TED talk. Uh, you go crisis text line, Google crisis text line, uh -huh. and see this woman's TED talk, and it'll blow you away. Wow. It's just really a meaningful thing. And what we know is the kids 
are much more emotional when they text mm -hmm. versus when they talk. So yeah. if there's any parents out there that want to get involved with their kids, learn how to text. That's an excellent you're point. you get a better in idea of yeah. where they're at. Yeah, that is an excellent that. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a kid will a kid nowadays is going to be more open in text form than right. verbally. That's right. why. Wow. Well, they yeah. don't control themselves as much as in open conversation. Yeah, with somebody yeah, overhearing a, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, this is really going on for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and uh, and the computer gets it. That's it. <laughs> the computer. That's <laughs> all right. So tell us about uh, uh, the the film Bully and uh, its screening happening here tomorrow night. Correct at the yeah. uh, the Del Norte County Library. Right mm -hmm. tomorrow night at the library at six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. It's a movie that was done about uh, three or four years ago and really hit the national scene. And it's about uh, six different or five or six different youth. Uh, going through the high, um, middle school and high school experience. Mm -hmm. And it was filmed over a whole school year. And so the cameras were there for a whole year. And as things went along, after the first two or three months, everybody just, it was like you used to no, was, no one was there. Yeah, yeah. So they really started getting how kids interact. Oh, wow. And how teachers act and how the principal acts. And all, what goes on in the school bus, and it gets down to a real reality show. I'll be damned. Whoa. Now, the sad thing about it is that it's it was ranked as an R7, R17, I think it was, or it, uh -huh. whatever the rating was that cuts out all high school kids. Oh, NC17, NC right? 17. Yeah, that's like one beneath X. Right, right? And, yeah. <laughs> and then we got it down to PG13. Uh-huh which is still bad, but in Canada, and I've actually got the CD or the DVD from Canada, uh -huh. it's G rating there. G. But in the United States, I think if it's more than three or four swear, swear words uh -huh. in a movie, mm -hmm. and it's an hour and 40 minute movie, mm -hmm. it, it kicks it up to PG-13. Yeah. And it's like, it's about middle schoolers. Yeah, How, you want them to. You see can't it. get through an hour, much less probably ten minutes, <laughs> and, they and get all, more of those. They go all day. Yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Oh, wow. So you know, reality check. That's funny. Here, that's really funny. And, and we have shown it, mm -hmm. uh, listed it as a PG thirteen, mm -hmm. and this is up to parents, and we're not going to do any checking. But I'll tell you, the, I think every kid in middle school ought to see it. Mm -hmm. In high school, and every parent ought to see it. Too. That's incredible! Wow. And then what we'll be doing is having information on how how to go about not doing a bunch of uh, Facebook and chitter chatter comments and complaints and all that kind of stuff. Don't mm -hmm. drag everybody through that. Go through the system that is set up in the school mm -hmm. on how to deal with these things, and and stand up and actually support your kid in going through. The process, because it's not an easy process, but unless we have more kids standing up and mm -hmm. more parents standing up, it's going to continue. Yeah, exactly. And we don't need things like Upriver and Klamath and all this other thing, these things that are going on mm -hmm. to distract kids from studying. Mm -hmm. Instead of worrying to how to get from one class to the other without getting pushed into a locker or my books knocked out or hit or something like that. Yeah how to go from one class to the other and say, I'm looking forward to thinking in class and learning something. At school is a place you should be safe. You should it expect should that. Yeah, exactly. It should be. Wow. Yeah. Gordon, thank you for coming in today and, yeah. and sharing with all of us. Um, keep an eye out for the, uh, uh, the semicolon buttons. They are all over. And one last question. Actually, yeah. where are we? 1224 is the time. I want to I wanna just, uh, we're talking with Gordon Clay, activist. Uh, um, uh, do you sense a change in the youth? I don't know if I've, I've only become, as my, as my daughters, I have two daughters and one just went off to college and uh, my youngest one is a junior at Del Norte. And I don't know if it's just as my awareness of, of the milieu, of the environment, of, of being a teenager nowadays in, in America, in Del Norte County, if it's just, you know, kind of flowered because my girls have grown up into, into becoming teenagers and, and beyond, that it seems like kids nowadays are at least compared to back in the 80s when I was their age, uh, so much more socially involved, so much more socially aware, and and while we talk about sure suicide and the incredible numbers that you that you that you bring to us that are that are frightening, uh, that kids across the board seem to have a better handle on issues like this. 
than say I did when I was their age. And I don't know if I'm just being an old guy and imagining that, or if that is, if you know, if you have noticed something like that. Too. Oh no, that's definitely true. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's good to that and bad. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to get information and rely on computers to get that information basically is phenomenal. Yeah. You can ask any question and get an answer to it. You don't have to get a whole set of Britannica and look through it and all that kind of stuff. But the, the downside is that, an example, the average student that sees pornography for the first time is 11 years old. Oh, my God. And so, and those kids, under state law, at least in Oregon, can't go to the medical professions mm -hmm. until they're 14 uh -huh. to talk about it or get any information for it because the state, in Oregon at least, requires the healthcare professional to report to the parents. Oh, wow. Now, what 11, 12, or 13-year-old, even 14, 15-year-old, that has been exposed to pornography, mm -hmm. but doesn't want to have sex, isn't interested in it, but wants to have answers mm -hmm. and wants to get it from somebody they respect, mm -hmm. are going to go to their parents because the parents are in a mode of, you can't have sex, you can't do this, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. got to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. And what we know is if we train kids around sexuality mm -hmm. and condoms and all that kind of stuff, they start sex later. And they have fewer partners. That's the irony, isn't the it? The <laughs> other piece is, and maybe you ask your daughter this, mm -hmm. if she'll go on and get an app called After School, mm -hmm. she may already have it. And what I learned over the NOW conference in Grants Pass last week is that kids are being severely bullied on that app. Really? It's an anonymous app, so nobody can tell who's doing it. Mm -hmm. And, and this was a woman out of Birkings that said, it's, it's really atrocious. I'm trying to get an access to somebody and a parent that gets, has the trust of their student to get uh, uh, the Snapchat, not the Snapchat, but the a screenshot uh -huh. of some of these bullying incidents that mention the student and what the bullying is about so that we won't be able to catch the bully possibly, mm -hmm. but what we can do is get our health services on top of it to talk to those kids that are being bullied. Mm -hmm. They probably won't come out unless they're invited out by a school official and mm -hmm. not in shame or anything else, but, hey, we see you're getting bullied on, on the Internet, and that's the vicious part of the Internet is the anonymous cyberbullying that's mm -hmm. going on, and that's happening in the schools, mm -hmm. and that it's atrocious all the way up and down the coast and nationally. Yeah, yeah. And we've got to find a way to help those kids that are getting cyberbullied, not say, well, they aren't on school grounds, so we don't have anything to do with them. They may be. The stuff can happen on school grounds, mm -hmm. and uh, and being anonymous. We've got to protect our kids, again, so they can be on campus and study mm -hmm. and get an education and get a d high school diploma, not a GED. Mm -hmm. Get a high school diploma because it'll give you a lot more money in the long run. GED is better than not getting anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, stay in school, have the social context mm -hmm. in school, and... Get a good education. Just as you pointed out with the uh, with with your description of the uh, the situation, say with with the average age of a, of, of a young person who encounters a uh, pornography for the first time, and then the discrepancy between that and public policy, as far as you know, what how old a, a, a person has to be before they can get any sort of sexual advice or education. Uh, I don't think I don't think most parents are comfortable with. Uh, or even maybe know just how far their parenting is being outstripped by technology and just an end around, you know, and, and, you know, I know I, every day my daughter, you know, oh, and you can do this and this. And she tells me something else that she's doing with her phone. And I'm like, what? I had no idea. And people don't realize just what, you know, that's an inroad and it right into their developing psyche, you know, because they, here they are staring at this thing all day long. And if they're getting bullied, if they're being accosted or assaulted in some fashion on in this way, I don't think people... I don't think adults realize just how much trouble their kids can get into or encounter 
digitally. And I'm not sure if there's any way to even attack that. I'm not, I put locks on phones. What would you do then? Well, I've got a, a semi solution. Okay. And I agree with you. Parents are totally, they're totally unaware. Mm -hmm. I did a speech at all four of the libraries here uh, last month on Not My Child. Mm -hmm. And parents really don't understand where their children are at. There was one kid who uh, the parents said, oh, he wouldn't even touch drugs. And then it ended up here in the county that he was a major distributor of marijuana. Oh, what I did is I developed a, a series of rack cards, 38 of them on 38 issues, including inhaling, cutting, mm -hmm. uh, molestation, major issues that the kids are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And it's for parents to deal with tough issues. And it, it gives an explanation on one side of an issue like uh, energy drinks. And then on the other side, how to talk to your kids about this so they'll listen mm -hmm. and not accusatory and that kind of thing. Yeah. And someday we'll talk about that. I, I'll leave you a pack of them. Uh, there are 38 issues, mm -hmm. and there are issues that, like in Curry County, cutting is really getting out of hand. Really? Is it and, a big deal? And huh? self-injury. And what we know also is boys self-injure as much as girls. They just do it differently. Mm -hmm. They do it with b cigarette burns and picking and that kind of stuff wow. girls generally do it with the razor i'll be damned that's so. wild wow wow i do want to is there anything else you want to add before before we wrap this up <laughs> thank you no thank you so much <laughs> and there's so much in this with the kids mm -hmm. nowadays that mm -hmm. i'd love to come back and I'd, we'll, we will talk anytime we'll certainly have you back and on to the talk big about piece it. is i want every parent to teach their kids 741 741 74 that so is the, the uh, kids can call that number the cards text that, are, that number text that number <laughs> thank you the cards are all around mm -hmm. the community so they can pick up a card that number is on it and yeah i had somebody say well on the phone it's it's vertical 741 741 and i said don't go there because this is a text and your numbers are horizontal in <laughs> yeah, a text yeah, yeah so don't get that in your mind <laughs> don't, you don't let that be stuck um the young person you know the young woman who uh, who committed suicide when yeah. was that when when yeah uh i think it was 2013 okay so fairly recently huh? That's yeah a... and and there was a young man that uh, had graduated and he was 18 mm -hmm. that committed and I believe it was one of those uh, contagion things where somebody commits suicide likes happening up a river in mm -hmm. Klamath mm -hmm. you know somebody commits suicide and all of a sudden three or four kids yeah. in that community uh, go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah I wanted to what I wanted to do and kind of leave you with too is uh, thank you for the the more buttons yeah. and and the updated cards certainly that's wonderful are you okay and it is and you've I've seen this around a bunch and I saw it on the side of your vehicle when you pulled into it's R letter R U the letter U and then okay uh, uh, and then 741 741 the text number to remember uh, so that you can text and then get access to this amazing uh, digital rubric that will analyze your language. <laughs> right. that's, that's amazing. Right. Wow. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to thank you, actually. I have, um, and I was probably, I don't know how much, how much, if any, of this you would be willing to, to take sort of credit for, of course, but it's something that you are moving in and experiencing. And uh, uh, my youngest daughter in middle school, gosh, about five, six years ago now, about five years ago now, uh, experienced bullying, and it involved us having to go to the to the administration and talk to them. Uh, and then since then, subsequently, she uh, has, uh, uh, you know, and all the stresses and everything of teenage life. And, you know, it is not, it's not Ozzy and Harriet. It is a stressful endeavor to be a teenager. And perhaps it always was, but it may be to us older folks, it seems like it really is now. Uh, she came out this uh, last year, uh, and is it Delnord High School? And I know her friends and I know the people that are around her and they're, they are good folks who have uh, Walker True, who is on the radio here, uh, uh, Sam Clark, folks I know of at the high school, kids I know of who are walking around with those buttons and with that awareness and being an activist and being involved in, in their community. And she has become like that as well. And I, just because of the way the kids have changed, it seems to me, which is why I asked you that question earlier today, because it's something I've sort of perceived. A different place, a different time. Yeah, I might be very worried about suicide with my daughter. 
just because of the stresses she's under and uh, the, 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 the situation she could be in as far as being bullied, as far as being ridiculed or persecuted in some sense. I don't have to worry about that because some reason the milieu of her friends and the high school in general, it seems, and teenagers in general, which is just blow me away, is so inclusive and, and non-judgmental at least the ones I know, certainly the ones that she surrounds herself with. Uh, and I think a big, big part of that uh, is despite all, the, uh, all the, the, the myopic adults and all the ignorance all around everybody are folks like you who are working with kids, who are bringing things like these buttons, who are bringing up these issues, who are, who are spreading the word about resources available to them. Uh, and also just living in a manner that whoever you are, whatever you're going through, it's okay. I, that's refreshing, and I'm glad to see that. I don't know uh, being expressed in young people nowadays, and it takes a lot of the, a lot of the worry that I might have had because uh, of of non non conventional non non conforming kids that I have, that uh, that they are strong in this sort of situation and able to take on what the world gives to them, and and it's because of, of work like folks like you. So thank you, I really appreciate that, and I and I like seeing those buttons everywhere, and I'm proud here at KFUG that we can have the buttons and the cards and win, and get that word out there. So thank you very much, Gordon. I really mean that. One thing. Mm-hmm. I, and I honor you for the relationship you have with your daughter and your perception of where she and her friends are at. Mm-hmm. And I, You're going to tell me don't ever think uh, it's not a worry, I, right? I, I, no, I'm going to tell you that be really careful about the concept of not my child. Mm-hmm. Because we see these things, but this world is such a vicious world, and yeah. that's why I want to get access to... Um, after school apt Mm -hmm. on what's going on there and so much happens that these kids that parents don't have any clue about and a lot of the kids it hits some nerve that really is painful for them Mm -hmm. and hopefully they've got the relationship that every time that happens they can talk to somebody about it Mm -hmm. but if there's that trigger that's really we don't know why why the young lady up in in Brookings committed suicide we think we know but it can be this littlest thing that is that button mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that got that, that, that got pushed and so my encouragement to you and all parents out there is continue the close contact checking in talking about tough issues that you're uncomfortable with listening don't interrupt your kid let them get it off and really keep that open as much as you can so that we don't have any chance that something will happen to her. That's an excellent, excellent suggestion. Excellent cautionary words, but then also, you know, just a nice proactive way to be a parent too. Right. you know, stay in contact, stay in right. touch, know what's going on. Right. Yeah. Gordon, thank you very much. Once again, we've got a, a film being aired tomorrow or being shown tomorrow at the Del Norte County Library here in Crescent City. It is Bully, and uh, uh, folks can come in. It is free, correct? Free. Right? Free to come in and talk. And did you say that there would be a discussion afterwards? Well, we'll have a short discussion. I've got some material to pass out for, for parents on how to discuss things with the school mm-hmm. and, and that kind of thing. So we will have some information. There may be some people from the school there that are – going to be willing to field questions mm-hmm. or uh, assist people in what the actual school policies are okay, cool. uh, to go through. I know all the policies up in Oregon. I'm not familiar with them here in Crescent City. Mm-hmm. And, and just one thing, because I think we did this before we went on the air, but we want to, I certainly would like to get this out there, is that uh, uh, Jeff Harris doing a bang-up job, huh? A real bang-up job. That's... I will tell you, Every, every connection I've had with him and connection with the schools that uh, know and are mutual, mm-hmm. it, it's just great. It's, it's an openness that is good to see in a school system that could bury its head mm-hmm. and hide out and say, oh, not us. Mm-hmm. We're different. We've, we've got counselors, and they all know everything that's going on with the kids. Mm-hmm. And to have somebody say, hey, there are issues that we don't even know about and we want to learn about them and we want to do something about them before it's too late. Exactly. Being proactive. Like and that Jeff is ahead of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Jeff Harris. Yeah. Gordon, thank you again. Get out there, see the movie tomorrow night. And you said you're taking this on the road. What's happening after, uh, yeah. after Crescent city? Uh, actually before Crescent city, uh, tomorrow afternoon <laughs> up in gold beach uh-huh. at the library, 
Then on the 27th, I'll be at the Brookings Library, Chetco Library, and at six o'clock at night, uh -huh. and in Port Orford on the 28th at six o'clock at night at okay. their library. All right. Well, so, best of luck to you, and great. drive safe. <laughs> That's okay. a lot of ground to cover, it right? Is. <laughs> it is. All right. You are tuned in to KFUG 